taking the day off yesterday. I wasn't sick, but I used a sick day. Uh, I know that's not quite right, but but um, I have a, a plenty of them, given that I I rarely take sick days off in my whole career, um, and I've got so many of them. I'm going to lose them all. My boss even recommended. He says you need to take more sick days. So I took a sick day yesterday for a very deliberate reason. I wanted to uh, engage with the authorities for on behalf of my neighbors Bob and Laurel, and I've been waiting for some time to do this for two reasons. One, I I wanted the appropriate moment. I don't want to be that busybody. Well, it's not that I don't want to be that busybody. I'll do what I need to do. I didn't. I wasn't completely sure I needed to. They seemed to be kind of getting back on their feet, so to speak. And then the second thing was a friend of theirs, Joanne, showed up uh, to help out, and I thought she had things under control. But then I learned the day before yesterday that they don't have things under. They're not on their two feet. Then they're not. They're not coming back on their two feet. And, uh, I don't think. And Joanne can't handle it either. So I, with their permission, I, Joanne's nod of approval and Laurel's approval, Bob's not here anymore. He's in the hospital and he's not coming back, I don't think. They agreed that uh, I, to let me summon help. And I did yesterday. So I took the day off yesterday. I went to the Huntington Beach Police and I filed a, uh, a, a um, <clears throat> well, it wasn't really a report as much as I made a request for a welfare check. And they told me that that would kick off the proper authorities to do to come visit them and then to also uh, send in care as needed. And that worked. Within two hours, uh, two police had arrived to talk to them. Then within an hour of that, a social worker arrived. And it turns out I learned from Joanne later that the social worker has been, in fact, engaged with them for some time. They just refused to get any help. Now, the interesting, they say that uh, no good deeds goes unpunished, well, that happened. So uh, Laurel changed her mind. Now, I can't fault her or blame her. Well, one, there's, you know my opinions on free will, but uh, uh, you might know it. Um, but, but she has Alzheimer's, so she doesn't remember necessarily the conversation that she had with me the day before, but she was quite upset. Told Laurel she knows one of the neighbors is up to it, and she's, uh, she was on the warpath yesterday afternoon to find out. So um, I told Joanne that that's all right. What's more important is I can take I can be the fall guy, and I told her it's fine. If 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 if, if, jo if Laurel begins to suspect that it was Joanne that did this, just tell her it was Kurt, and uh, let me be the I'll be the heat sink, so that at least she and Joanne can have good contact. Right? That's sometimes a useful function. Anyway, the good thing is all possible avenues of assistance are engaged now that I can possibly think of. And so in terms of a lifelong friend is engaged, although she's older than them, she's not really capable. She's, she's having a tough time too. The police are aware. They've, I've, they, a, are aware. Social workers are already aware and then maybe more assistance might be coming on, on its way as well. And as um, is often the case, it's now up to it, either they will fall so far over the edge that they'll have to be uh, cared for by the state, so to speak, uh, or they will continue to refuse and suffer. Now, it's interesting because I did about two months ago, I did a, an AI training for a group of homeless advocates um, or you know agencies in, in Central California that work with the homeless. And I learned during that engagement that the main challenge of these service organizations, those are, these are volunteer service organizations. Sure, they're sometimes funded and backed by government, government subsidies, but these are agencies that are seeking to help those who need help. The number one challenge that they have is that people say no. They don't want any help. That really, it's a wow, you know, an eye-opener for a lot of reasons. And they told me it was because of uh, distrust, uh, being comfortable on the streets, so to speak. You know, I guess even hell can be uh, familiar, right? Um, uh, or they want to continue doing uh, things that wouldn't be allowed under the auspices of, of a helping hand. So <clears throat> now they're not homeless yet, Bob and, and Laurel, but they what I, what I think they're up against is the, uh, the, 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 the terrible aspect of what they've been hiding from. And I'm reading more into it probably than I should, but I think a lot of us do this. It's one of my pr principles in my book, the principle of distraction. 
we distract ourselves all the live long day with all the things that we have in our life so that we don't have to why in the book I say we don't have to witness the evidence of the great or the lack of evidence that reveals the great indifference um, likewise we can distract ourselves so that we don't have to face the hard work of living and the fact that death is approaching quickly for all of us and giving in to social services especially finding themselves in uh, long-term care of some sort uh, might seem as such I know that they both entertain the dream of retirement they are an example they are a cautionary tale for Yumiko and I they have they did work and they postponed their adventure life the retirement they travel they wanted to travel they postponed it now they're not that old Laurel's only 67 she's six years older than us they postponed it to this point now and now their poor health has rendered them incapable of proceeding and they might be still have their head in the sands and not want to face that fact that gosh darn it you know they, they invested their whole lives in hard work and in the end when it was time for their turn at the roller coaster the ride is closed down <laughs>